Lovely. It's quite a peculiar one, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. And you can, you know, I could take a picture of you, Mark. I could literally take your portrait, upload your image into the pixel stick, and then light paint the photograph of you in space. It's a shame we're only looking at eight images tonight because I've got a whole library of, of images created oh, using the pixel David, stick. David, already you're there, coming back again, so don't worry about, about it. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> that'd, that'd, be cool. that'd be cool. But yeah, I've, I've created a lot of images using the pixel stick. But it's, it's an interesting tool in that the light painting community are quite divided about it. You've got some light painters who think it's a great creative tool for certain purposes, and you've got other light painters who absolutely hate it. They think it's a gimmick and it's cheating because it does all the hard work for you, essentially. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. I, <clears throat> I enjoy having it in my kit bag, and because I teach workshops, it's a massive crowd pleaser, this tool. When you see this thing actually activating in real time as you walk you know, through the space with, it, with the lights flashing, and you're left kind of guessing what image is about to appear in the back of your camera screen. It's incredibly exciting. Mm. Um, but it is quite a two-dimensional tool in that it creates a linear light painting, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's if we compare it to the lightsaber device we were talking about earlier, it's not it's not an organic light painting tool in the sense that you're walking three-dimensionally through space and creating a more kind of um an image with more a light painting with more presence because the other tools are more sculptural in what they create in fact a lot of light painters call what they create light sculptures essentially that's what they are they're free-floating sculptures made out of light that are only made visible uh, through the the beauty of long exposure photography they're intangible and i think it's this kind of um i promise you if any of you haven't tried light painting yet you'll become hooked very quickly once you begin it's um it is is the most magical creative form of photography I can think of. And I've tried a lot over the years, but it's, um, and it's so physically involving as well. I always joke with people in my workshops that if they want to continue light painting, they won't need to go to the gym so often because um, <laughs> you have to walk around a lot, which is a benefit. It's very therapeutic as well. Um, maybe that's a conversation for another evening, but the, the number of people I speak to both in my workshops when I'm out making my work, um, other light painters online, I'm, I'm friends with some of the world's best light painters. Everyone comes back to this notion of there being something therapeutic about light painting. I, th I think it must be something to do with the sensory deprivation of working in the dark and using tools that illuminate in the dark to create sculptures out of light. There's, it's not only a magical process, but it does something to you. It's, um, it is truly magical. Anyway, uh, as you can Amazing. probably probably guess, I could I could speak about light painting until I'm blue in the face, but we should press on. Right, this this image, this is um, this is called a physiogram. That's what light painters have kind of named this this approach, this shape, this structure. Um, I think another name for it is a harmonograph, and it's created by hanging an LED, a weighted LED, from the ceiling. And because we're hanging the light from the ceiling, we need to direct the camera lens up towards the ceiling. So the camera is facing upwards for this this type of light painting. And the idea is, I, I made a, a huge number of these images in my garage when I lived in Guernsey. We had a garage that was very dark in the winter months. And I spent hours in there every week spinning lights from the ceiling to create different kind of uh, patterns and shapes. And the idea is that you give your LED a good old shove and it starts spinning around, you know, in a central motion because gravity takes hold and it starts spinning. And that's why, as you can see, this lovely fine pink line in this image has been created by the spin of that LED from the ceiling. We've got a few more things going on in this image because as I grew in confidence when I kind of played around and experimented with this approach, I was able to kind of add different features to my light painting. So there's the butterfly back again. That's my little keychain being flashed several times into the image. And you've got this kind of blurred spinning backdrop. And that was created by spinning the light around twice. But the first time I put some frosted acetate over the camera lens, which is why it was so blurred in the first instance. And then I removed the acetate did a second spin, which is much more clear. And you obviously have to make sure the focal point is set on the end of the light source that you're using when you hang it from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. so that's how it's that a process works. It's a spirograph, goes. isn't it? It is very like a spirograph. I often think of spirographs when I look at these images. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the beauty of these images is, apart from maybe a little bit of creative thinking, like I say, I've kind of tweaked and tinkered with a couple of things during the, the, the shot. Gravity does nearly all the hard work for you. Once you've set your focal point and you kind of get the right aperture for the light source and so on, 
it's just a case of repeating the process multiple times and experimenting with different colors of LEDs and so on. And here's a little tip. Instead of buying different colors of LEDs, which can get expensive, you can change the color of a white LED very quickly by using the, the sweetie, empty sweetie wrappers of quality street sweets. You know those sweetie wrappers that are kind of colored gels? You can use an elastic band or a piece of masking tape just to quickly you know, cover a, a white LED with, with one of those um, sweetie wrappers and it immediately changes the color of your LED. A nice little tip. And it means you get to eat lots of chocolate, which is always a bonus. Not for me. Not for you? Okay. No, I need to stay off the chocolate more. Everybody on the <laughs> webinars would agree yeah. to that kind of thing with it, you know. Yeah. It wants me to get fatter and older and grayer over life, you know. Yeah, well, I, I could say something similar about myself. And it still feels like Christmas was just a few weeks ago, doesn't it? My goodness. Anyway, right. This is the eighth image, um, How Time Flies. This was a fascinating project. I, I'm so pleased this happened. So last, last June, I was contacted by um, a kind of intermediary company, a design agency in Saudi Arabia. And they asked me if I was going to be free over the summer to make some light painting, potentially make some light painting imagery for them for a global advertising campaign, which sounded daunting immediately. And I said, well, yes, I'm around this summer. Um, let's, let's, let's talk. And they phoned me up immediately after the first email. Within seconds, they were on the phone and said, when can you be here? And I said, well, what do you mean here? And they said, Riyadh. And I said, no, because <laughs> I've, I've got a young family and we had some plans for summer holidays. Um, but thankfully, I thought that was going to be the end of the conversation um, because I, it sounded to me initially like the work had to be made on location, as I'm used to doing. But through some creative thinking and knocking our heads together, they, they kind of birthed the idea of me making the light painting artwork for this project remotely. And they hired uh, a special effects company to lift my light paintings that I've created hundreds of for them um, into scenes from all around the world. And because we're only looking at eight images tonight, I'm only going to show you what, one or two of these, of course. But um, there was a whole library of images used for this project. The, the resulting artworks ended up in on, on billboards all around the world. In fact, they were up in Leicester Square in lights. They were in airports all across Europe. And Saudi Arabia was littered with, with uh, the advertising, uh, you know, flyers and, and boards and, and LED panels and all this kind of thing. It was mind-blowing what the work turned into in the end. But if we rewind a little bit, because I didn't really appreciate just how massive a project this was until the very end of it, when it went live, um, thankfully, because that might have been slightly off-putting. I was fully focused on making the work. And of course, last summer, when the kind of window of time they gave me for making the work, I just happened to be going back to Guernsey again, because I go there every summer. My sister still lives there, and I've got, we've got lots of friends and family there. And so I decided, um, I very much told them about this, decided to kind of earmark um, seven or ten days out of the fortnight we were there for making light painting work and I became fully nocturnal. You know, I was heading out at midnight and coming back at 5 a.m. kind of thing because the tidal movements were cruel. They really worked against me last summer. Um, so low tide was really late into the night. Um, and I knew which beaches I wanted to work at. And unlike my usual approach to light painting, which requires moonlight, I wanted a new moon. So no moonlight. I walked in almost pitch black conditions. Um, and created the light paintings because we didn't want to see the landscape through these light paintings. They wanted the light paintings, remember, to be lifted from the, the, the initial context and placed upon different scenes. And so I, I, I kind of sampled and experimented with different approaches to help create more perspective to the ribbons I was using. I even, as you can see, had this huge pole on top of which I kind of taped my lightsaber to and tried to move back way back to almost where the sea is and walk towards the camera whilst moving it up and down it didn't really work it was really unwieldy and very difficult to use but we got there in the end i was receiving images a bit like what we're looking at here so they they provided me images that were captured by professional photographers all around the world at different locations and they would draw these very basic lines on the images and say this is roughly how we want the lines to move the lines of light to move through each of the images that was my brief as simple as that, really. Um, lots of discussion in between as well. And I would then head out, and and as best I could, I would make the light paintings that fitted, um, roughly fitted, or as exactly as I could, the, the these, these movements that they've kind of um, prescribed. And they wanted a couple of images of me 
kind of making of scenes. And this is the image I talked about earlier. This is an image whereby I've been in mid flow, mid light painting flow, you know, flying this, throwing this wand around. And my friend Chris, who was out with me that particular evening, fired his flash gun at me diagonally, which has frozen me into the scene. That's why you can see me very, very much visible in the middle of the light painting. So you can add people to your light painting work um, pretty easily if you so wish. Um, I don't do it very often. I know there are light painters out there who specialize, they're professional light painters with, you know, they do a lot of portraiture. Um, I, I don't do so much of that. I, I like to create the sculptural element more that's kind of freestanding and floating within the landscape. Um, but certainly achievable. Right, um, I'm going to briefly pause and welcome any more questions, Mark, before I kind of wind things down with a very final folder. Yeah, um, so questions. Um, well, look, before we lose people, um, let's make sure we kind of talk about the ebook and where they can see stuff a minute. Have you got something to show on that or? Yeah, we'll, we'll jump into that very quickly. Yeah, before. if you don't mind. Uh, I mean, because I definitely don't want uh, to miss out on that, if that's okay. Um, All right. That's very kind I'm, of you. So this I'm is the just going to put the yeah. links into the chat panel now anyway, as far as your okay. website is concerned. And uh, from there, you'll be able to access the Instagram, et cetera, okay? So um, right. everybody, if you miss out or whatever it is, I know we've gone past the hour, but it's well, well worth it. Um, sorry, David. It, so can they find this on, on via the website anyway? Yep. So... That was going to be my next slide anyway, Mark. So the website's at the top. And really, like I say, like you just mentioned, you'll find my Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that stuff through my website. But that's mm -hmm. that's my website there. Brilliant. Um, so we'll let's talk it. about the ebook, can we? Yeah, well, we can talk about it briefly. Um, you, you can read about it in detail on my website. There's a whole page that, that rambles on about the contents and so on. But these live on my website during... During lockdown um, back in 2020, what a grim time that was. Doesn't seem like that that long ago. Um, I kind of used my time quite wisely and um, as well as homeschooling my eight year old, well, she was what, five back then, my five, six year old daughter, um, which was testing. I, I used the rest of my spare time because all my workshops ground to halt. I, I've always wanted to write a book. And so I spent four months writing a book on, on light painting and a book on uh, macro photography, my little people, just to help not only other photographers get creative during the lockdowns, but also help other teachers who are really struggling to teach art online. They found it a real challenge. And so I wanted to produce um, educational materials to help others. And that's that's what, what these books were born out of. But they're e-books, they're downloadable PDFs they're on my website. Go and have a read about them there. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, I'll put the link on Facebook when we finish today. Uh, I've got this graphic as well with it, but you'll actually spin off towards that and things really. So thanks, David. Uh, you know, I've got some more questions anyway, if you don't mind hanging around for five, ten minutes. Absolutely brilliant. Huge, huge, huge. Thank you from everybody uh, online kind of coming through and things really. But um, I, if we can, we'll just do those last questions. Let me uh, make the me the presenter to show the screen. And as I said, the uh, website I've kind of put you off to anyway is to David's uh, web website page. And obviously up here, you can see the eBooks. So head over there and have a little look anyway with it and things really. So, but uh, thanks very much.